Gamers on Games is sponsored in part by Hey viewers, Dave here for Snappy Turtle Comics and Gallery. Snappy Turtle Gallery is your go-to destination for geeky, nerdy prints, and each is just $5. With over 600 prints and growing, you're sure to find something you'll love. Go to SnappyTurtleGallery.com today and get yours. I'm Lynn from Metalhead Minis. Great to meet you. Uh, be sure to check us out online at MetalheadMinis.com. You can find out more about our services, such as miniature painting. We also do consignment. We also teach at local game stores. Be sure to check us out at MetalheadMinis.com. Thanks for having me. by viewers like you. Hey everyone, Dave here for Gamers on Games and today we're going to cover the SSU's Steel Guard. I want to give a shout out and a thank you to Gratuitous Lurking for inspiring this episode. Gratuitous Lurking wrote the following to us. I got into my local gaming slot via Kill Team and then 40k proper, and since then my gaming circles branched out to both Star Wars Legion as well as Dust 1947. I've looked between a couple of the factions for Dust, and I've kind of gravitated towards the Steel Guard models pretty much on an aesthetic alone. These big walking trash cans, packing heavy weapons. Most of my experience with 40k was in Chaos Space Marines, or Astra Militarum. Would I be correct in assuming that these guys basically function like a small army of dreadnoughts? So thanks for writing in. So would I say that Seal Guard are like dreadnoughts? Not quite. To me, if we're staying with the Chaos Space Marine theme, I would say dreadnoughts would be closer to, like, KV-47 battlesuits. Not only in terms of scale, but in terms of capability. The Steel Guard, to me, feel more like Havocs. I say that due to the overwhelming firepower. If you combine that level of firepower with Nurgle's disgusting resilience, I think you're hitting Steel Guard. So let's take a moment and look at the various Steel Guard squads individually. Then we'll take a look at Steel Guard heroes, platoon formations, and then some basic tactics in subsequent videos. Some basic information about Steel Guard units that applies to all squads. First, they're all class 4 infantry, making them the strongest, most resilient infantry in the game not to be heroes or superhuman. Second, they are all 2-3 movement. This means they're going to be slow and are going to be less adept at changing trajectory quickly. Third, they're all squads of 3, except for the snipers which are deployed in pairs. A note about the snipers though, they are both equipped with sniper rifles, but do not have camouflage. Fourth, they're all proportionately expensive. The cheapest squad of 3 is the close combat squad and costs 10 points. A point worth noting, however, they are the most mobile squad in the Steel Guard lineup, but we'll get back to them at a later point. Lastly, all Steel Guard units have the Steel Guard trait, which means they have two-thirds of a chance of saving, never have a cover save, and their infantry saves are not negated by artillery. Steel Guard also have damage resilient. First up will be the Steel Guard Command Squad. Steel Guard Command Squad comes with an officer, mechanic, and medic, and allows you to access all of those command options. The squad itself is toting some rather impressive firepower, though none of it is particularly universal. Armed with an autogun, dual machine gun, and a heavy shotgun, the Command Squad can defend itself readily from most infantry bold enough, or possibly foolish enough, to attack them. If you have to attack Steel Guard Command Units with infantry, you really only have two good options, either attack from range 7 or 8, or go close combat. The Steel Gloves aren't too much to fear in close combat, and are mostly there to allow the Steel Guard to trash your vehicles. It may be tempting to go after them with air units, but as most air units are class 2, you'll be contending with 4 shots inbound, each doing 2 points per hit. This could be devastating to a number of aircraft. I would like to note that Steel Guard tend to have issues with flame weapons, and to quote one of my favorite opponents, you can cook them in the shells. Next, let's take a look at the Assault Squad. 
As the name implies, the squad is devastating at closer ranges. At four or less, which isn't hard to accomplish in most boards, Class 2 infantry will be eating a whopping 21 shots from two heavy shotguns and an autogun. As always, for beating on vehicles, they have their trusty steel gloves. Assault squads are really good for chewing through enemy infantry and screening for vehicles or steel guard snipers. Now, if the assault squad isn't enough anti-infantry firepower for you, or you're concerned about the possibility of death from above, a fire support squad may be where you want to put your attention. This squad sports two auto guns and a dual machine gun. Against infantry 2, you are able to throw 19 dice. Two less than the assault squad, but you are able to do so at range 6, which is comparable to most class 2 rifle ranges. In addition, you are putting out 6 dice against aircraft, and with that at range 8 for the two auto guns. This will give you a good zone of control to shield other squads. I'm sure by now you're thinking, well, these seem great for dealing with infantry, but am I relying on vehicles to combat my enemy's armor? No, this is where you're going to want to look at anti-tank, anti-infantry, sniper, and Tesla squads. And I know you just went, hold up anti-infantry against tanks? Is that how you want to play it? Yup! In fact, I believe the anti-infantry squad is better at handling enemy armor than the anti-tank squad. Granted, they're also 5 points more expensive to boot. So, the anti-infantry squad comes armed with one dual machine gun and two RPG-15s. The RPG-15s throw two dice per and insta-kill class 1 and 2 vehicles, but do four points of damage per hit to all other vehicle types. The insult to injury here is that they're also flame burst weapons. Units hit by flame burst weapons are suppressed and do not get their infantry or cover saves. It also affects everything in one square or under a blast template if you're playing gridless. But as I said, they are more expensive. Plus, you have to get closer to your target as the RPGs are only range 3. The anti-tank squad has two RPG-12s, which have the grenade effect attached. That means that infantry don't get their cover save, but vehicles still do. The RPG-12 also is range 4 instead of range 3, insta-kills up to class 3, does 6 damage to class 4, 5 damage to class 5 and 6, and 4 damage to class 7 vehicles. But you only get 1 die per RPG in the squad. This right here is why I prefer the anti-infantry squad. The number of dice to me outweighs the range bonus. The flame burst also suppresses the target and denies saves. This to me is a major bonus as I am more likely to score hit, do damage, and suppress the target. To me, this makes up for the additional cost. Let's talk about the Steel Guard Sniper now. The Steel Guard Sniper is the only Steel Guard squad to be deployed with less than three models. These pairs are also the cheapest Steel Guard units and have the best range and tend to outrange most lesser infantry snipers and don't have to rely on a spotter. The Steel Guard Snipers also are the only sniper squad in the game that can damage vehicles with their rifles. The damage scales from 4 damage per hit down to 1, but being able to damage vehicles at that range from an infantry group is pretty impressive. To further exacerbate their threat, when making sustained attacks, the power scopes give them two-thirds of a chance of hitting, making them comparable to most hero snipers. Now we come to the Steel Guard Tesla Squad, carrying the SSU signature weapon, the Tesla Gun. The Tesla Squad's two Tesla Guns are exceptional at slowing down even Mythos creatures by inflicting stun counters. And remember, even Mythos creatures can be stunned, just not suppressed. In addition, each Tesla Gun gives you three dice against all infantry and vehicle targets. So, six dice total for a fresh squad, not counting the firepower the dual machine gun leader brings against infantry and light vehicles. The newest Steel Guard squad to be released is the Close Combat Squad. This squad brings a lot of new versatility to the Steel Guard lineup. This squad is equipped with Tesla clubs, rocket packs, and smoke grenades. As I'm sure you've gathered, this squad is built for getting up close and personal. Let's examine the squad's equipment real quick. First up is the smoke grenades. This is the same as the smoke launcher, except that the 2x2 grid must include the squad. Uh, smoke bomb! Next, let's take a look at the rocket packs. The rocket packs are once per game, but the squad gains fly, charge, and doubles all its movement and march values. This will make the squad movement 4-6 for a round, which may be just enough 
to have them pile in and start beating on a vehicle or infantry squad. The Tesla clubs have the Tesla trait, meaning they inflict stun, and each model in the unit gets two or three attacks with each club unless they're fighting infantry four. The close combat squad can damage vehicles, but quickly gets less effective at it as the vehicle's class increases. But being able to stun the vehicle and potentially inflict crits is not to be underestimated. Admittedly, of all these squads, the close combat squad is the only one I've never fielded. But if Dust USA would like to supply us with the Kowalski Raiders set to highlight these units, we wouldn't be opposed. Green, green, wink, wink, nudge, nudge, sign them all. So I think this is a good introduction to Steel Guard. Next time, we'll take a look at the Steel Guard heroes. So if you've enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe. And if you really like us, why not head over to our Patreon page and toss a coin to your witcher, oh valley of plenty, oh valley of plenty, oh.